Now, if I do have to divide assets into those separate trusts, as the surviving spouse and the trustee, it's just a matter of retitling assets. I'm not really creating new trusts. Just when my kids inherit, and let's say I leave them assets in trust, we're not really creating new trusts. My trust already describes how all of these trusts work, how these trusts work, how my children's trusts work. You know, my trust up here already describes all those and creates all of those. It's just that nothing goes into them until I die, until those trigger points happen and either I die, my spouse dies, or we're both gone. Why, why would I do that, create an A-B split, rather than just give everything to the survivor's trust? Right? Taxes. I mean, the, the easiest thing to do administratively is just to say everything goes into the survivor's trust. Because now the survivor still just has a single trust that is still just under their social security number. All right? Just like in the living trust, assets are going to be linked to my and my wife's social security numbers. Well, if my trust says everything goes to the survivor in the survivor's trust, she now owns everything in her trust that she can still amend, can still change, and everything's still just reported under her social security number. So the trust does not need to file a separate income tax return. When my living trust says create these separate trusts, do the split, well, this marital trust and the family trust do have to file their own income tax returns each year, do have to get their own tax ID numbers. So why would I want to go through that headache? Well, first of all, if we do have an estate, taxable estate, our collective estate is over $10 million. Well, I have to do that now because Otherwise, when the survivor dies, especially if the survivor, and it's not even so much an issue today because of this portability that we have, which is earlier I said the surviving spouse or together we have a $10 million estate tax exclusion. See, under old law, if I died and did not use my estate tax exclusion, I lost it. My surviving spouse couldn't use it. So let's say that we each had a million dollars we could leave estate tax free and I left my share, my million dollars, to my wife in the survivor's trust, and she now died. Well, she now owned $2 million, and her exemption was only $1 million. She couldn't use mine. I lost it when I died because I didn't use it. Well, that would have subjected that estate to a, a tax of about half a million dollars. Right? Out of our $2 million estate, our kids were going to lose a quarter of it because I just gave it to the survivor. I didn't put my million into the family trust. So let's say we do not have an estate tax problem. Right? Our, our total estate is $2 million and we can each leave $5 million tax-free. So I have no tax issue. Why would I want to divide up the assets at that point? Multiple marriages maybe. Because what's in this family trust? can be used by the surviving spouse. Right? So the surviving spouse has access to all of these trusts during the rest of the survivor's life. But what's in the family trust or in that marital trust, if it gets created, is not subject to the claims of creditors of the surviving spouse. So let's say the surviving spouse causes some horrific car accident and people die in that car accident, the survivor gets sued. Now, if I kill people in a car accident, that judgment against me is a lot more than my $300,000 auto liability limits. All right, it could be for millions of dollars. Well, that creditor can take everything that's in the survivor's trust because as the survivor, I control that trust completely. And if I control a trust, my creditors can access it. Just like this living trust. A living trust is not a creditor protection device. And just because I don't own my assets, they're owned by this trust, does not mean my creditors cannot access those assets. For creditor purposes, it's just as if I owned them. 
Same's true with the survivor's trust. But it's not true with the family trust. So if I'm a couple, we have $2 million, don't need to do this division for tax purposes, but we do it anyway, and my million dollars goes into the family trust as the first to die spouse, now it's protected against the creditors of my surviving spouse. Or what if she goes into the hospital and racks up all these medical bills? Right? They can't not get to those family trust assets to collect. <coughs> or the remarriage situation. Right? If I leave everything to the survivor's trust and my wife remarries after I'm gone, remember she still controls that trust completely. She can amend that trust still. She can disinherit our kids and leave it all to the new spouse. Now maybe she wouldn't do that if it's our kids, but you can bet she'll do that if the remainder beneficiaries are my kids from a prior marriage and they're not hers. But I wanted to make sure at least my share of the estate went to those kids. Well, I could put restrictions in my living trust. I could say, surviving spouse, if you remarry and you do not put a prenuptial agreement into place with a new spouse to protect these assets for those kids, then you lose access to that family trust. Or maybe I, I don't even bother with the prenuptial. I just say, if you remarry, you don't get to use my property anymore. You can only use your property because I want to make sure at least my share goes to my kids. So there's lots of reasons why I may still do that division unrelated to whether there's a tax problem. Creditor protection, remarriage protection, right? protection from predators, a, a new gold digger or the pool boy. <laughs> so I'm the trustee. You know, my job is to collect all of these assets. Uh, as the successor trustee, one of the things I'm going to have to put in place is this new certificate of trust. All right? That certificate that says the trust exists, here's who the trustee is, here's the name of the trust. All right? I've got to put a new one in place so that as the successor trustee, I'm now named in the certificate of trust. Especially critical if the trust owns real estate. Right? So the deed to my house says, Ron Adams as trustee of the Adams Living Trust. I now die. Well, the title of my house is still in the name of Ron Adams, trustee of the Ron Adams Living Trust, or the Adams Living Trust. So my successor trustee has to prepare and record a certificate of trust that says, Ron Adams has now died. Here's his death certificate. I'm now the trustee of the Adams Living Trust. So that person now has the power to sell my house or to rent it out or to deal with that real estate. So that new certificate of trust has to be drawn up. 